Hey you guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about normal distributions, uh, but we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. We're going to do something called inverse calculations. Now that sounds really fancy, but it's not terribly fancy at all, and Excel does all the hard work. Let's see how it's done. So what is an inverse calculation? It's probably best to think of this in contrast to the kind of questions we've been doing up until this point. See, up until now, we've been asking questions of the following sort. What is the probability that some random variable is less than a particular number, or greater than a particular number, or something like that? The thing is, I give you an x, and you're supposed to give me a probability. right? So on this normal distribution, I might ask, what's the probability that our random variable is less than 60. Here we can see that we've got a normally distributed variable. It's got a mean of 50. And so what is this entire area here? Right. So your professor or your teacher gives you this and you need to provide the probability. An inverse calculation just reverses that order. See, now what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a probability. And the question is, what value of x gives us that probability? So um, I might say, what is the prob you know, what value of x gives us? So what particular value of x? gives us this probability. And so your professor or your teacher gives you the percentage and you need to tell him or her what particular value of x gives you the 80 percent. Now that graph is a little bit um, cluttered so here's a slightly cleaner version of that. So what value of z will give us the 80th percentile? We can try a whole bunch of different z's and try to bracket our results. So we could start off with a really, really low value of z, um, let's say negative uh, 2, and, uh, and the area associated to the left of negative 2 is only 2%, so we're far away from the 80th percentile. But if we, we increase our value of z, well, we're starting to fill in more of that area. So here we get up to 69%, 77%, we're getting close. Oh, 84, oh, that's way too high, that's 93. But we can try to bracket maybe right there. Yeah, right at like a Z value of 83. That seems to give us an area of 80%. Now, this could be a whole lot of work. I mean, trying a whole bunch of different values, candidate values of Z, just to try to like narrow down what specific number gives you the 80th percentile. That could be a real pain. Um, but there is a far more elegant way of doing this, uh, and that's really to use Excel's built-in statistical functions to answer this question. So let's turn to Excel right now and see how that's done. Okay, so we've opened up Excel. I've typed in just a reminder in the top left of what our question is, which is, let's give us a number, like let's find a number, let's call it A, such that the cumulative probability up until A is 80%. Or in other words, out of a standard normal, what value of Z gives us the 80th percentile? So rather than trying a whole bunch of different candidate values and kind of trying to triangulate or you know bracket an answer like we did graphically just now, uh, let's just use Excel. So we key in a formula. They all start with an equal sign. And we're dealing with a normal. But now, rather than asking for the probability, so we would do dot dist, we're going to do an inverse. And there's a couple different inverses. There's an inverse for a standard normal and a non-standard normal. And this was a standard normal, so we're going to do norm s inverse. Then we just open up the parentheses and we provide the probability that your teacher gave you, the 80th percentile. Hit zero, and we get a very precise answer. So with my bracketing system there with the graph, I came to close to like 
0.84. Here we can be even more precise. It's 0.84162. That's our particular value of z. So just to verify, we might just calculate directly what's the probability that z is less than 0 0.84162. So how do you do that? Norm s dist 0 0.84162. We have to indicate that we're looking for the cumulative distribution, and we get back our 80%. It's just as easy to do this with non-standard normals. So here's a little made-up example. Let's say I gave an exam, and the class did horribly. The average was at 50%, um, so the, the, the class average failed, and the standard deviation happened to be a 10. Now, I don't want to fail, you know, almost all of my students. I only want to fail the ones that did really, really poorly compared to everyone else. So, uh, so I decide that I'm going to give an F only to those students that scored in the bottom 10th percentile. And I need to figure out what value of X of my test scores would put students in the 10th percentile. Okay, so essentially what I want to find some value of my test score, I'm not sure where it is. Let's just say it's it might be here. So I'm wondering what particular value of x would give me a percent where you know we get a tenth percentile. So I'm not sure it's between 30 and 40. We could use Excel to figure that out. Let's go do that right now. Okay, so how do we find the 10th percentile from a non-standard normal. See, the teacher is giving you the 10%, so you need to provide the particular test score. We're doing an inverse calculation. So norm dot inverse, and this time we don't do dot s dot inverse, because this isn't a standard normal. This is a normal with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So we have to provide the probability. We do that as a decimal. And then you have to tell it where you're sampling from. It's not a standard normal, so you need to provide the two parameters that define the particular normal. So give it the 50 for the mean, 10 for the standard deviation, close your parentheses, and then you're done. And you get 37.18. So in other words, only those students that scored a 37 or less on my exam should get the A. And everyone else should get, I mean, should get an F. Uh, and everyone else should should get better than that. So going back to my earlier drawing, it looks like I guessed pretty accurately. The particular test value was actually right around 37. So it was between 30 and 40. Now that's for the, the students that did really, really poorly and got an F. Uh, who would deserve an A? Let's say that I want to give an A to the top 10th percentile. So now I've got something like here. And so this area is 10%. Now remember that the problem with Excel is it doesn't do well with greater than probabilities, areas to the right of a particular number. It only, only likes to calculate things, areas to the left. So I need to rephrase this as what value of x would give me an area of 90%? Or in other words, rather than saying I want to give an A to my top 10%, I could say I want to give an A to the students that beat 90% of their classmates. Phrased in this way as a, a less than probability, uh, Excel should have no problem with that. So let's go do that right now. So our question is, out of a x random variable that's normal with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10, what's the 90th percentile? So we key in norm inverse 0 0.90 for 90 percent. We tell it the mean, we tell it the standard deviation, close your parentheses, hit enter, and we have our answer. So 62.8 is the particular value of x that gives us the 90th percentile. So going back to our earlier graph, particular test score that gives us 
a percentile of 90 is 62.8. So in other words, if one of my students scored a 62.8 or better on that test, they deserve an A because they did far better than almost all of their classmates. They did um, better than the 9 out of 10 of them, the 90%. So as you can see, calculating an inverse using Excel is just as easy as calculating a percent. If your teacher gives you a percent, you need a particular value of x, that's an inverse. Your formula is norm.inverse and then give it the parameters for your particular question and then Excel just spits out an answer. It's really straightforward. I think you can do this. Thanks for listening.